وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق من هذا وجه وبث من هما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد في السورة غاشية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يوم عذ خاشية عاملة ناصبة تسلى نار حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يوم عذ ناعمة لساعها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وذرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, I firstly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace, mercy and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his beloved family members, upon his beloved companions and upon all of us and our family members. Ameen Allahumma Ameen. <coughs> the surah that I recited in the beginning of my talk is Surah al ghashiyah And if you know the definition of an ayah, an ayat, loosely translated, is a verse, but the verse does not do justice to the word ayah. An ayah is a sign which shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. A sign to show that the Quran is true from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and a sign to show that Islam is the true religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an ayah, a sign to, to reflect something. A surah is filled with ayats. A surah is filled with ayats. You might talk about a surah being a chapter, but generally when you talk about a chapter of, of physics or science, it has something to do with only that chapter. But a surah has many, many things to, to, to tell us, many things, many lessons that we can draw from it, many advices from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many warnings that Allah gives. So you really can't say a surah is a chapter that deals only with one particular subject. A surah might have 10 different topics in it and you might draw lessons from each different subject in it. And with that, today's focus, inshallah, will be lessons from this beautiful surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran where Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would recite it on a particular day. 
which he loved, which Allah loves for himself, which Allah loves for this ummah. So inshallah, with that I introduce the topic of the Jummah Khutbah, lessons that you, you and I can take from Surah al ghashiyah <laughs> Something about this Surah before we introduce, or rather we understand and explain the Surah. Number one, the meaning of the word Ghashiyah. Ghashiyah comes from the first ayah. Hal ataka hadith al Haven't Have you heard about the Ghashiyah? Allah is asking a question in the first ayah. First ayah, have you heard it? If no, then you should know about it. If yes, then what is going to happen on that day? The surah explains it. Ghashiyah means event. An event, an overwhelming, an event that Allah is talking about. And this event reflects back to the day of judgment. Next, this surah is revealed in Makkah. Now it's very important for us to know why Makkah because there are four signs that Allah talks about. Four signs that people of Makkah were very very familiar with. And they could not deny these signs. Four signs. Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, next this surah takes its position even though it is revealed early in Makkah, it takes it towards the end of the Quran, 88th surah. And it's linked with the surah, the previous surah, and it has a beautiful connection to it, inshallah if Allah wills, we would take the lessons from surah al-A'la as well, inshallah. 88th surah. Now, what I want to focus is on Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as an Imam recited this surah on two particular occasions and both of them are grand. Both of them for Muslims are grand. Number one on Yawm al Jumu'ah. Allah's Messenger that he would recite the two rakats, he would pray two rakats maximum number of times, maximum number of times that he recited was Surah Al-A'la and Surah Al-Ghashiyah. Why? Why every, you know, every Friday of his life, he would stand, give the khutbah, come down of the member, recite Al-Ghashiyah. There are certain things that you and I should know from this surah. And you and I must have gone to hundreds of masjids all our life. Masjid after masjid, Friday after Friday. And you would have heard the Imam reciting the same surah, but left with nothing probably. Today, inshallah, we would understand this surah, that at least when you walk out of the masjid, you've heard what Allah's Rasul recited every Friday probably, and you've taken some lessons that, we need, that you and I need to implement in our life. The second grand event that he recited, was one of the two occasions is on Yawm Al-Eid. Even though he recited different surahs in Eid, like Surah Al-Qaf and Surah Al-Qamar, there are some riwayah, there are some hadith that which, which say that Allah's Rasul also recited Surah Al-Ghashiyah on Eid. So meaning, two grand occasions, Allah's Messenger leaves us with Surah Al-Ghashiyah. So there's something in it that you and I should understand and take lessons from it, inshallah. My second heading is, I would like to explain, not tafsir, Allahu Akbar. Tafsir would take many, many hours for this beautiful surah, but I would only like in the next five, six minutes to explain every ayah, just every ayah, Arabic and then a little bit of English, inshallah, wherever we can fit in. Right? Or rather, just go through the translation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hal ataka hadith al -ghashiyah. Now I mentioned to you what Ghashiyah was. Ghashiyah is an event. So Allah is asking a first is asking a question even before starting with the surah. Have you heard about this? So have you heard about this event that is going to happen? Without a shadow of a doubt. If you have a doubt, then fix your, your state of mind. Don't question the Quran or don't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how certain Allah is in this question. Have you heard it? It's going to happen. Then Allah mentions about on the day of judgment, right? Whenever you have results, 
Whenever you have an examination, you have results, you generally have two kinds of people. The ones who've cleared the test and the ones who failed in the test. That's it. You can't even... Even if you say a person who's got like the, the passing grade, he's still secured it. He still made it. So there are two kinds of group people and Allah mentions both the kinds of people. And he says the first ayat, he says, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاعِمَةٌ وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ خَاشِيَةٌ that some faces, wujuh is faces, on that day will be khashia. Khashia comes to the word scare, fear. They will be scared, they will, be, they will have fear on their faces and they will be humiliated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't talk about those who passed. Allah is talking about the first group who've not succeeded. So the first ayat that hits you after the day of judgment is be scared of it. The word khashia means to be scared. People who are going to be scared on that day, who are going to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows it, describing the punishments, describing what they are going to get on the day of judgment. What they are going to get in once their result is announced. So Allah says, عَامِلَةٌ nasiba." Amil is a worker. Nasiba is distressed, filled with difficulties, tired. He's really, really tired. You've only been trained to work 8 to 10 hours. Imagine you are standing there for 50,000 years. How tired you and I would be. Allahu Akbar. You can only stand for a couple of hours in this, in this life. Max 2 hours, 3 hours standing. And then you, your back would give in. So Allah says, Amilatun nasiba, workers distressed with difficulty, standing before Allah. Now what happens to them when Allah puts them in Jahannam? When their when their decree is made and they say, Go, Allah says, Tasla na, tasla narun hamiyah. Now the word tasla is, is subhanallah, it's beautiful. The word tasla means not being pushed. But being dragged, dragged by yourself, you would drag yourself to where? Narun Hamia. Nar is Jahannam, is fire. And Allah says, Hamia is blazing fire, blazing fire. Just to give you one simple hadith as to how the fire of Jahannam would be, brothers, subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's unimaginable. Allah's Messenger وسلم, says, the fire of this world that you see, subhanallah. First of all, brothers, you and I don't know how Jannah looks. Yes, we can only imagine. Allah says, gardens under which rivers flow, houses, pearls, gold, subhanallah. Amazing, milk, honey, whatever. You and I can just imagine, you've never witnessed it. But Jahannam, subhanallah, every single day of our life. Whether you smoke or don't smoke, you see Jahannam. Smokers see it from the closest path, subhanallah. And yet they don't leave the cigarette, Allah musta'an. Imagine you're seeing fire from a distance of two inches, three inches. And yet nothing changes, Allahu Akbar. The hadith that I want to quote is of Sahih, which is classified Sahih by Shaykh al-Bani, rahimullah. He says that the fire of this world is orange. The fire of this world is orange while the fire of Jahannam is multiplied 69 times to the world's fire, to the fire of this earth, where it is black. It is black. Brothers and sisters, I'm asking you a simple question. I'm asking, I, I ask myself this question. Can you put your finger in a lit candle for more than 10 seconds? Think, you can't. What about multiplying that same lit candle into 69 times and then putting yourself into ten, in, 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 in that for 10 seconds. Allahu Akbar. Think for an entire life in that Jahannam, brothers and sisters. Allah Musta'an. May Allah save us from Jahannam. Ameen. So Allah says, Tasla naran hamia. You yourself will be dragged. You will drag yourself to Jahannam. Then Allah says, Tusqa min ainin aniyah. 
and they will be given drink, subhanallah. When you are burnt from within, from outside, you want something cool. You want something, something that will give you relief. Allah says, yes, you will be given to something to drink. But what is that? It's boiling hot, boiling hot pus. Allahu Akbar. It's boiling hot water that Allah is talking about. This is the, remember, this is the first section, first group that Allah is talking about. He talks about the day of judgment, talks about the people of Jahan, the, some faces will be humiliated, and then their punishment in it. Then Allah says, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٌ And they will not get any food, any food. Brothers, you and I can starve for 24 hours, say 36 hours, 48 hours, you're gonna, be, you're gonna collapse. You and I need food. Allah says, I will give you food. But accept one thing. What is that? He says, Barir. Barir is a poisonous thorny plant. Poisonous thorny plant that where the thorns would get stuck to your throat. You neither can swallow it, neither remove it. Allahu Musta'ani. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Every single Friday, brothers, you and I listen to these ayats. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٌ Subhanallah, doesn't change. Nothing moves. You're thinking, I think about the lunch that I'm going to eat afterwards. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah says, لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُعْ It's neither going to nourish them, neither fulfill, neither complete their hunger. It's, neither, it's not going to nourish, neither, neither satisfy your hunger. Then Allah says, so this is the first group. Six ayats about people of Jahannam. Their faces, their punishment, and what is going to happen. Now Allah moves to the second group of people. The ones, inshallah, may Allah put us all in that group. I mean, the ones who've secured, the ones who've done well in this life, so that Allah was happy, Allah's pleasure was upon us, Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness were upon us. Allah says, وُجُوهُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاعِمَةً And certainly, surely on that day, there will be faces who will have na'imah. Na'imah comes to the word ni'ma. Ni'ma means delight. Ni'ma means blessings. Ni'ma means a favor that Allah gives. Na'imah means faces will have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faces that will be delight. Faces that will be happy with pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Then Allah says, لِسَاعِهَا رَاضِيَةً and their faces, they will be in a state of joy and happy. They will be faces who will be state in joy and happy. Exactly opposite to the people who were in Jahannam. Then Allah says, Fi jannatin aliyah. Jannah is gardens. Allah says, Fi jannatin aliyah comes to the word ala. Ala means highest. Subhanallah. So Allah says now, for the people of Jahannam, they were in the lowest. They were burning. While Allah tells, وُجُوهُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاعِمَةً The faces that had delight, where? فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةً In gardens that are raised high, really, really high. And we know from the, from the right, yani from, from Allah's Rasul Sallallahu that, that there are grades in Jannah. There are grades in Jannah. And what is the highest Jannah called? Jannatul Ala, Jannatul Firdaus. Subhanallah. May Allah make us from them. Ameen. Amen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tasma'u fiha laghya. They will never, never hear any laghwa. False, false, vulgar talk, evil talk, ghibat. First thing, subhanallah. It's so amazing. Out of all the acts of this life, of this life, Allah pulls one act and says, you will, you will not find this in, Jann in Jannah. Whatever you and I have done in this life, one act for it to be pulled up and, and, and mentioned in this surah that Allah says, this will not be in Jannah. Meaning, it's going to be maximum in the earth. It is going to be on the earth. What? Laghwa, evil talk, ghiba, vulgar talk, falsehood, lies, everything comes in it. Allah says, لا, تس, لا تسمن ولا يغني And you will neither hear any, uh, any falsehood in it. في 
And then Allah says, فِيهَا عَيْنٌ جَارِيَةٌ Ayn is a spring. In it, there will be a spring. Allah mentioned the same word. Yani they will get a spring, but of boiling water. Here, a spring of whatever you desire, be it honey, be it water, be it milk, whatever. Allah's Messenger has described Jannah for us. And He's mentioned that there is no, whatever you desire, you will get. Then Allah says, Jariyah in this ayat. Aynun Jariyah. What do we do for the Sadaqah? We want Sadaqah to come on and on and on, not stop. We say Sadaqatul Jariyah. So Allah's Messenger says, Fiha, Allah says, Fiha Aynun Jariyah. A, a, a spring that is not going to stop at all. SubhanAllah, never going to stop. Then Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fiha Sururum Marfu'ah. Surur are beds. And marfu' is raised. Wa akwabun mawdu'ah. Akwab is cups. And they will have cups to drink whatever they want. Wa namariqu masfufah. Relaxing in, on cushions. Relaxing on their thrones. Relaxing on their, on their sofas. Whatever. Subhanallah. Then Allah says. Wa tharabiyu, wa tharabiyu mabthufah. And carpets spread out. Now you can just imagine brothers. A house that is made of gold, saffron, as your bricks and, 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 and cement. And you're sitting on raised thrones where boys are, go, are serving around with cups. Whatever you desire, you name it, it's there. Carpet spread over, subhanAllah. We only can go back and think of our living rooms. But just imagine that same thing in Jannah, which is beyond expectation, beyond even imagination, subhanAllah. Then Allah comes down to four big signs. <laughs> Haven't you seen the camel? How we have created it? Why camel of all animals? SubhanAllah, if you go back, what was the most common animal to the Arabs? It was a camel. So Allah does not pick up any animal that was, that was not known to the Arabs. Allah picks up a camel that was dearest as wealth to the Arabs. Allah's Messenger says, there's nothing more dearer than a red camel to an Arab. The priceless camel that Allah's Messenger said. Right? So Allah says, أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And haven't you seen the sky? Heavens, have, how we have raised them up. Something that you and I can see every single day. Nobody is, is yani, the sky is not hidden from anyone. Every single day you walk out, you can see the sky, how Allah has raised Allah says in, in a different surah, have you, have you, can you see pillars? You can't see how beautiful the creation of Allah is. Then Allah says, وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And how we have made the mountains firm and strong. You can't move them, subhanAllah. Firm, strength, a source of strength. When you look at a mountain, you know it's strong. Then Allah says, وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ How we have spread the earth. For you to live on, how you have spread the earth. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ So remind people of the Qur'an. Remind people about the Qur'an. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْتِرْ You have no authority over those others to guide. Allah's Rasul is not the one to catch you. Or you and I can't catch anybody and say, be guided today. The guidance is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I can only show the Qur'an and say, Brother, this is the Qur'an, read it, understand it, and make dua that Allah opens your heart. Even the Prophet ﷺ closed his uncle, Abu Talib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger literally was in tears for this man, yet he died as a kafir. He tried his best until his last breath. He says, Qul, ya um, oh my uncle, um, Qul, say, oh my uncle. La ilaha illallah. Once, once, I will take it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet he didn't say it. Meaning, Lasta alayhim bi musaitir. Musaitir is a person who has authority over you. It's like a dictator. Allah's Rasul is not a dictator. Allah's Rasul is not a person who has authority over those who to be guided or no. So then Allah says, Illa man tawalla wa kafar. But the one who tawalla, tawalla is to turn away with disgust. Kafara is to reject. Both the words are here. Illa man tawalla. Tawalla means to turn away with disgust and kafara means to reject. If I, brother, this is the Quran. I reject it. I don't believe it in the Quran. I don't believe in the Quran. 
Simple, I'm a kafir. But if, I, if you are a Muslim and I say, brother, Allah has mentioned this in the Quran, don't commit shirk. Don't, yani don't wear the taweez that you are wearing. <coughs> obey, Prophet, obey Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa You turn yourself with disgust. You say, la, khalas. I'm going to follow what my forefathers did. You turned away with disgust. That is, illa man tawalla wa kafar. And those who disbelieve. So two kinds of people, the kafir and the Muslim who turns away. Both are mentioned. So what does Allah say to them? He says, فَيُعَذِّبُ اللَّهُ عَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرِ Allahu Akbar. Leave them. Leave them. Their azab is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what kind of azab? Azab al-akbar. The greatest of all azabs. Allahu Akbar. How does Allah start the surah? وُجُوهٍ يَوْمَ إِذٍ خَاشِيَةٍ They will be in Jahannam. This is the Jahannam. Allah says, Azab al-akbar. Double the punishment. Greatest punishment. Allah says, إِنَّا إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ Surely they will come back to us. There is no escaping. They will come back to us. Who? Those who turned away from the Quran. ثُمَّ إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ And then we will call everyone to حِسَاب. Everyone, everyone's account will be opened and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his hisab. Before I end this first khutbah, brothers, remember, you and I are only here for a test. You and I are only here to make our deeds yani, in front of Allah, nice, in front of Allah, that Allah will accept it. Make sure that your hisab is not opened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says there are 70,000 pe 70, people from my ummah who will not have their hisabs open. Allah will not even open their hisab, meaning they will go into Jannah without account. Subhanallah, may Allah make us from that. Amen. Brothers, it's just not to say Ameen. Let's follow it. Number one, the one who does not believe in omens. Number two, the one who does not yani, commit shirk. In this hadith, he says the one who does not believe in omens, the one who does not practice ruqya, and the one who, يعني, the one who puts tawakkalu ala, uh, ala rabbihim, the one who puts his trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't believe in anything, brothers, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Right? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa li sa'ilil muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa furu rahim. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر I begin with the praise that belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace, mercy and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon His beloved family members, upon His beloved companions and upon all of us and our family members. Ameen Allahumma ameen. In continuation with our khutbah topic, lessons from Surah al ghashiyah the Surah that Allah's Rasul recited maximum on Fridays. I move to the last heading. What are the lessons that we can draw from this Surah, brothers? When we walk out today, what what do you want to walk out with? This is the message that I want to give, inshallah. The first part, let's analyze this surah in, in two minutes. This surah has four parts. Part number one, people of Jahannam and their punishments. Part number two, people of Jannah and their pleasures. Part number three, signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mountain, camel, earth. Sky. Signs. Allah gives signs. Part number four about the Quran. Reminder. Remind the Quran. For surely it'll benefit. Quran is there to benefit. But the one who turns away, Allah is there to give him Azab al Akbar. So now there are four parts. Part number one, Jahan Jahannam. Part number two, Jannah. Part number three, signs. And part number four, Quran. Take the Quran as a guide. But now I want to leave you, leave you with part number three. Subhanallah. It's so amazing when you study Arabic, when you study Quran, when you study the tafsir from the ulama, and what you can derive from it. Phenomenal, subhanallah. The verse that I opened my talk in the second khutbah, أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلُدْ About the camel, about the sky, about the mountain, and about the earth. 
When Allah talks about Jahannam, when Allah talks about Jannah, Allah talks about Jahannam, Allah talks about Jannah. And Allah talks about the fuel, the Quran, the source of strength, the source of guidance, the source of Iman. Allah mentions the signs in between. And He says, this is how a Muslim should live. Say, camel, sky, what has it got to do with a Muslim's life? Subhanallah. Allah says, Afala yanzurun. Haven't you seen the camel? Brothers, ask yourselves a question. Which is an animal that has extreme conditions to live in? Both heat and the cold. You might find animals that live on ice. You created for it. You might find animals that can live in a desert. But subhanAllah, if you see the temperatures drop in a desert, they are drastic. One day you might have a drastic change, yet the camel goes through it, number one. Number two, if you look at the camel, subhanAllah, it is the animal, it is the animal that can survive without food and water for so many days. Why? Because it knows how to store, it's been created how to store. Number three, whether the camel likes it or not, it is in the desert facing all challenges, yet its determination does not falter. Subhanallah. The first thing Allah mentions about camel is telling you and me, brothers, how determined we should be in our life. We might face challenges like the desert. What if you and I put in the desert? Subhanallah. You and I will be made to suffer. You and I will be made to face challenges. Can we have the determination like of the camel? Afala yanzuruna ilal ibli kaitha khuliqat. That's the first lesson that Allah gives in the surah, in the sign. Second, what should a Muslim aim at, brothers? Jahannam or Jannah? You say Jannah. I'll come to Allah's Rasul's hadith. When you ask a dua for Jannah, ask for Jannatul Firdaus. Just don't ask for any Jannah. Allah's Messenger says, ask, tas'alul, us'ul, is'al, ask for Jannatul Firdaus, meaning the highest place. What is the highest place that you and I can see today? It is the sky. Allah says, Wa ila samai kaifa rufiyat. Look how we have raised the sky. Your aim, your goal in life should not be mediocre. Your goal in life should not be one leg in Jannah. That's it. No. Your aim in life, your goal in life should be Rasulullah in Jannah. Subhanallah. Say Ameen, brothers. Ameen. Rabia bin Qab radiallahu an. Small Sahaba. Nobody knows him. He's not like the Abu Bakr and Umar. He's not like them. Allah's Rasul says, Ya Rabia, tell me what you want from me. You want camels? You want to marry somebody? He says, No, Ya Rasulullah. I want to be with you in Jannah. That's his aim. Subhanallah. Aim for the skies. Aim for the highest point of your life. You fall, you will fall second. You won't fall down. Next, when you aim for the skies, how firm and strong should you be? Allah says, Wa ilal jibali kaifa nusibat. How strong have we made the mountains? Subhanallah. How strong have we made the mountains? You want to be a Muslim? Be as strong as a mountain, brothers. Nothing should falter. Don't be embarrassed of your Islam. Don't be embarrassed of anything in this life. Because Allah is backing you. Your strength should be Jannah. Your strength should be as strong as a mountain. Your aim should be Jannah. The fourth. Allah says, wa ilas, wa ila al-ardi kaifa sutihat. And look at how we have spread the earth. Brothers, when you have iman, when you are determined to get your goal of the sky, when you have strength, you know what happens? You tend to become arrogant. Allah is telling, be as humble as an earth. How do you be humble, brothers? I want to ask you a question. What do you walk on? You walk on this earth. You lie down when somebody walks over you, when somebody puts his leg on your face. Will you be humiliated or will you have pride in it? Subhanallah. You will be humiliated. Meaning, you need to be humble in this life. Like the earth. Earth is something that you don't take pride of, brothers. Allah promises by the sun, by the, sun, by the stars, by the planets, by the sky. Something, the earth is made to walk on. Like a carpet, like a, like a doormat. Nobody is proud of a doormat. You don't call your guests to show the doormat. Subhanallah. Allah is telling, be like the earth, humble in its approach. 
When you have strength, when you have a goal, when you get the right attitude, be humble, don't be arrogant. And Allah says, stops this passage with saying, Af innama anta mudhakir. Innama anta mudhakir. Remind them, remind them, for the Quran is surely that, will, that is going to help you on the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, I end this khutbah leaving you with two verses from this ayah and a question to ponder over. The two verses are On that day, there are some faces that will be humiliated. And the second verse is On that day, there are some faces that will be in delight, pleasure, happiness. The question that I want to leave you with, brothers, and myself, I ask myself first and you, what is the face you want to stand before Allah? Humiliated or delighted? By Allah, the choice is in how iman, how your iman is on this book. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu alayk. Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatu wa fi al-akhirati hasanatu wa qina adhab al-nar. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa furu rahim. Utlu ma uhiya alayka min al-kitab wa aqimu al-salah. Inna salatan anhan al-fahshai wal-munkar wa la dhikru Allahi akbar.